Hey, I get so many questions about watercolor paint um, that I thought I would chat with you on a video about it because I'm kind of tired of repeating myself is one thing. And then the other thing is, is that um, I just feel like as art teachers, watercolor paint is like our go-to paint. It's the least messy, I feel like, of the kind of paints that you can use. I guess the other one really being liquid tempera. Um, it's easy, all kids should know how to use watercolor paint, but as you guys know, not all watercolor paint is created equally. There is a lot of CRAP watercolor paint out there, so I wanna share with you what I use because the colors are beautiful and vibrant and it took me a long time to find um, watercolor brands that I liked. Um, so I want to eliminate all of that long drawn out process for you and just share with you what I use. I'm going to show you three different kinds of watercolor paints today. Um, two of them being pan watercolor paints, this being what I call pan paint, and then the other being liquid watercolor paint. Um, okay, so let's first talk about pan watercolor paint. I think most art teachers, when you go into your art room for the very first time, you open a cabinet, you're going to see cabinets filled with these kind of things. Um, that's what I refer to as pan watercolor paint. I don't use these trays at all. Perhaps if I had students for a longer class or I wanted them to do a little bit more mixing of watercolor paint, the trays, these little trays would come in handy. Um, but I don't do that mostly because I don't want to have to wash them later or I also don't want the kids to mix so many colors on the tray. Let's be honest, mix it up, muddy it up, and then end up using those muddy colors on their paintings or muddying up the tray. So when I distribute pan paints, this is what my little setup looks like. I have these little trays. They're kind of like a thick cardboard. I don't know where I got them from, but it's literally just a little tray. So even a styrofoam tray would work great. Um, and then I have these cups. These cups I've had for years. I believe they're available in art supply catalogs. There's no name on the bottom for me to share that with you. They look filthy, dirty, nasty, and that's fine with me because even if I washed them, they're just gonna go back to looking filthy, dirty, nasty. The reason I love them is because they are called no spill cups and they actually live up to their name. These puppies don't tip over. So on the tray, I have my no spill cup. I, which I only fill half full with water. I have what the kids and I call dirty old SpongeBob. These sponges are regular size sponges that I've just cut in half and I let them dry out in between each, um, I guess, painting session. We use these sponges whenever we're painting. So um, we use them with temper paint. We use, even use them with glazes when we're painting with different colors of glazes. The reason I like having the same kind of materials for all kinds of painting is because then that same routine is established and I don't have to have a repeat of painting directions every time. Whenever my students are painting with a supply, whether it be watercolor, liquid watercolor, temper paint, glaze, they know wash your brush, no splashing, dry off on dirty old SpongeBob by dragging your brush, not grinding your brush. So that's just my setup for this watercolor tray, and then of course, these guys. So what is this? These are Crayola paint pans, and what I would recommend you do is this if you've never ordered um, this kind of paint before. Do not every single year order one of these. It's a waste of money, it's a waste of plastic. Crayola sells, but if you've never ordered this before, Crayola sells two kinds of watercolor paint. They have like the standard set, and don't quote me because I don't know that that's what it's called. And then they also have the watercolor mixing set. When I first used these, I was blown away by how much more vibrant these colors are versus their regular watercolor paints. Um, I wouldn't order the set though because the set is kind of strange. It comes with a white, it comes with black, and it comes with two yellows in that set. I just think that's weird because I don't use white I mean, with watercolor paint, if you want something lighter, you don't add white, you add water. Um, and with black paint, I, I don't use black paint with watercolor. If you guys have taught kids in painting before, you know that that's like their go-to color and the next thing you know, their whole paper is black. So instead of ordering this, I order the refillables. 
So I've already taken them all out of the refillable boxes and I just keep them organized in, by color in these little trays. That way when I have one that is empty or looking pretty gnarly, I can just pop it out and replace it. So what colors do I order? I like to order and then I lay them out like this in their tray. I like to order magenta. I believe in the catalog they call it red violet. Red, red orange. I don't order their orange. Their red orange is much more vibrant. Yellow, green. Their green is kind of meh, but I get it anyway. Turquoise. Their turquoise is beautiful. Blue, violet, um, and then violet. There's also a blue, and their blue is kind of also meh. It's interesting. They're uh, mixing colors, the ones that are turquoise and red violet and blue violet, their colors are so vibrant. So that's what I order. And I usually order it so that I have two, I'm sorry, yeah, two kids per this. So where I'm sitting right now, if there's another student sitting next to me, we would share this tray. And what I've noticed is yellow usually is one of the first colors to go, so I always order extra of that, and same with magenta and turquoise. The kids love those three colors. So when I'm ordering my refill packs, I usually get enough that will last me one go round with the set and maybe two replacements of that, if that helps you kind of sort it out in your brain how much to order. I love to obviously over order because we go through some watercolor paint, and when you're painting with... 300 plus kids, then you're going to go through some watercolor paint. So that's what I use for watercolor. And that's how I set that up. Now, speaking of pan watercolor paints, if you're on a low budget, like most of us are, this is what I would get. And if your budget is so low that you have to pick like one kind of watercolor paint to get, this is still what I would get. This is at the top of my list. If I had a bigger budget or did a fundraiser, then you might want to consider, in addition to this, getting Pelican brand paints. I love Pelican's watercolor paint. These kind of paints that I'm showing you today can all be found in your art supply catalogs. Pelican is spelled with a K, by the way. And I got the big set. You push this little button here and it op these two sets separate, push the button again, and it opens. Just like the Crayola mixing colors, you can pop these out. One thing that I forgot to mention is that I like being able to set up my trays. For example, you don't see any water, any brown watercolor or black watercolor in my tray. Mm -mm. I kick those to the curb unless we're strictly using those colors. And like I said, because the kids will demolish a beautiful, bright, vibrant painting with those two colors. So I usually keep my watercolor trays in a rainbow spectrum. It also helps if I say to the kids, okay, we're gonna paint in rainbow order. If we're making a rainbow, we're gonna use just the warm colors, so you're gonna use the first four. We're gonna use just the cold colors, so you're gonna use the last four. So this just, having it set up like this means that I can teach so many different color theory lessons with this little paint pan. And I do the same thing with this guy. So right now, a lot of my Students are using these paint trays and I have it set up with all the warm colors and all the cold colors. Why am I using this versus this? <laughs> I actually hadn't put in my order yet. So this is kind of like my backup. I love these watercolor paints, but they aren't quite as translucent um, as a true watercolor paint. I almost would call them more of like a gouache. They even come with a little tube of white. Um, to make the colors lighter. Again, it's a watercolor paint. I feel like that's not necessary. So, and then this is like kind of our, the backup colors, the colors that didn't make it into the rainbow cut, but still a great variety of colors, even though obviously we've kind of demolished some of the colors on there. They just need to be cleaned up with a little water. So that's pan paints. And again, these guys, you can pop these out but in the art supply catalogs, I have not seen that they have a replaceable versions for each of these. So that's kind of a drag. I don't wanna to have to buy another complete set just because I'm out of a couple of colors. I'm sure if I did a little bit of shopping online, maybe there, maybe Pelican's website or something, I would be able to find replacements. But that's one thing that makes this kind of paint a little bit of a drag versus my old standby.
Let's talk liquid watercolor paints. I like liquid watercolor paints a lot, but it's not necessary. This is again, if you have money in your budget, I feel like. The reason I, I think a lot of art teachers love liquid watercolor paint is because it's so vibrant and beautiful. And a lot of art teachers, I think, are using the wrong kind of pan paints, and they, so therefore they don't see those beautiful colors, so they think that the only way to get vibrant colors is with liquid watercolor. These guys, I'm telling you, will give you vibrant colors, but I still love liquid watercolor paints, especially if your students are painting bigger pieces of paper. They're painting large pieces of paper. This guy doesn't provide a ton of paint, but liquid watercolor paints do. So liquid watercolor paints come um, concentrated, so you do want to add just a touch of water, but I always just test it first. If you add a little too much water, then the next thing you know, you've got really diluted paints. Um, when I distribute this paint, I keep them in these little cupcake tins that you can find at the Dollar Tree. And then I put them in these little silicone trays so that the kids know what color is what. And um, we just have these little condiment cups to keep the paint in. And how do we clean our brushes? Um, we don't use obviously the same system as this because it won't fit. So sometimes we'll even use doggy dishes. I love, these are from the Dollar Tree also, having dog dishes out also um, because wash your brush here, dry off on dirty old SpongeBob. So liquid watercolor paints, yeah, I love them. I, um, I don't have one brand that I love more than the other. I have found all the liquid watercolor paints that I've used that they're all pretty good. So I don't have one recommendation. Like right now I have Saks. I've used Blick before. Um, yeah. And so there you have it. That is um, watercolor paint 101. If you are desperate and you don't have a budget and you need watercolor paint or you want to try liquid watercolor paints out there is something that you can do to create your own liquid watercolor paint start saving your old dried out markers put all of your like colored red markers band them together take all the caps off and let them soak in a large mason jar um, putting water at the bottom of the jar talking too fast put the markers in there the ink that's left over in the marker will come out and get into the water and create a very diluted version of liquid watercolor paint. So I hope that helps. Um, these are the kind of paints after years and years that I have found that work best for me. So maybe just a couple of those tips will work for you. Thanks guys for letting me share.